What's going on, guys? Let's just get right into this one. This one very much gets to the heart of what we've been saying, what our main issue with these image to, or sorry, text to image generators has been, how they're using the work of living artists that they obtain is through pretty damn shady and unscrupulous means. And basically the effect that that's going to have on living artists. And I do want to kind of direct this one to some of the concept artists that I've seen on Instagram using these tools who kind of say, oh, this is just a tool. It's not the end. It's really neat. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, well, let's hear it from the man. Let's hear it from one of your heroes. What he thinks about having his artwork included in these data sets in a machine learning algorithm that just rips people's styles off. So here on Artnet News, found this interesting article and it goes, AI should exclude living artists from its database, says one painter whose works were used to fuel image generators. The digital artist Greg Rakowski has seen his style copied in thousands of images created using artificial intelligence. Look at that. That shit is absolutely sick. So it goes on to say, Text to image generators fueled by artificial intelligence have spurred lively debates, lively debates about the purported end of society's need for trained visual artists. The technology has already launched a bevy of amateur artists who make use of AI, including Reed Hoffman, the founder of the employment platform LinkedIn. He harnessed the platform Dali, created OpenAI's and uh, sorry, and creator OpenAI's commercial rights policy. Basically, dude made a bunch of NFTs, sold them for a bunch of money. I did quickly research this, and he did say he was splitting all of the funds between different charities, which made it a little better. But not the point. The point is they're stealing the work of living artists. I want to just kind of digress for just a hot half second and say when this was just some sort of research thing, it was easy for proponents of this technology to be like, it's just for research. It's just for research. And if you have half a fucking brain, you know that, yeah, research now, for-profit business model tomorrow. And that's where we are. They all have subscriptions. They're all making money and they're all making money on the backs of living and dead artists. And that shit absolutely sucks. I don't care where you stand on it. If you have a single fiber of a moral compass in your body, you will know that that is not okay. And if you don't know that that's okay, off to carousel you go. Anyway, so blah, 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 blah. So now it goes on to say established artists like Greg Rakowski have been pulled into the debate. Welcome, my friend. The Poland-based digital creator has illustrated fantasy scenes for well-known role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons, Magic the Gathering, but his art style has become so popular that many online fans are now using AI to mimic his style. <sighs> MIT's technology review reports that Rakowski's name ranks among the most used prompts in mid-journey and stable diffusion two popular open access AI image generators where users have input Rakowski's name 93,000 times. 93,000 times. That is far more than users request for images similar to the style of Michelangelo or Picasso, whose names have been employed as prompts no more than 2,000 times each. Sorry, Picasso, but I've heard you were kind of a dick in real life. The platform Disco Diffusion even suggests his name as a sample prompt. Fuck off. So in an email to Artnet News, Rakowski said he only discovered AI made art a few months ago. I've seen many of my art friends posting news about it right before I started receiving messages that my name was being used as a prompt. He explained, I wasn't really into AI as a tool to use or experiment with. Good for you, buddy. Somehow, I haven't considered it as a useful tool in my workflow. At first, Rakowski considered his newfound popularity on the AI platform as an avenue to maybe reach new audiences. But when, running, sorry, but when he ran a web search of his own name for other reasons, works in his style he had no hand in making turned up. That is some fuckery. And that's something that I always bitch about. Like, if you're an AI artist right? And you're running around and just basically claiming somebody else's style as your own original work. You're just a scumbag. And 
for those people who just don't understand why that's not okay, take a moment and just think about it for a second. You're basically ripping someone else's style off in the most low effort and no skill manner manageable and then putting it forward as your own. Now, if you're just like, hey, I'm just screwing around with this AI, I use this guy's prompt, blah, blah, blah. It, it kind of diminishes your scumbaggery, just a scoochie boochie, but it is what it is. There's really no way around it. And I will hold this opinion fast and I will shout it from the rooftops until they do something about this. I mean, look, no one gives a shit what I have to say, but when a legend like Greg Rakowski chimes in here and it's like, yo, this is not, not okay, let's hope some people are going to take it to heart. Let's hope some of the concept artists that I actually look up to and respect who are out there using this tool and be like, yeah, it's super neat. Like, just take a step back. Take a step back and just think about it for a second, okay? You guys are not helping at all. So it goes on to say, text to image generators scour the web for images that provide the algorithms with visual knowledge, right? That's how the algorithm learns. It doesn't teach itself. It just, it's a blender, right? So Rakowski's fantasy-inspired work naturally deals in subjects suited to AI's purposes, creating otherwise impossible scenes. However... As Technology Review pointed out, AI image scrapers inadvertently punished Rakowski for his decision to make his work more accessible. The artist regularly uses alt text descriptions when he posts his images online to make them readable by visually impaired people. What a good dude. Good for you, buddy. I'm sorry that you're getting punished for this. But, it goes on to say, that information also makes them easier to scrape for the data and easier for the AI algorithms to understand. So it goes on to say, Stability AI, the firm behind the platform Stable Diffusion, trained their algorithm on Lion's data set of more than 5 billion image text pairing, pairings. I'll put the link to that database down below. In my last video, we kind of explored it a little bit. We have a small sampling we have access to, but it's supposed to be pretty representative and give you an idea of whose stuff they're ripping off. The German nonprofit organization has excluded images with watermarks and non art images like brand logos from its collection. Who absolutely cares at all? But technologist and writer Andy Bao analyzed 12 million of the data set's images for technology review and found many come from the site. Sorry, many come from sites like Pinterest, Fine Art America. I would add also DeviantArt and ArtStation are far more so than Fine Art America just because. They have more active users, so it goes on to say Rakowski's work was likely scraped from his portfolio on ArtStation. Despite the fact that AI runs on a database of images harvested without the original creator's permission, Stability AI's license agreement frees them from responsibility for how their tech is used. Well, isn't that convenient? I think that's a really well-worded little system you have there. So it goes on to say, users of the AI must abide by a copyright infringement honor code. <laughs> they put honor code. Oh, fuck off. But there is no enforcement against rule breakers. <sighs> AI should exclude living artists from his database, Rutkowski said. Let's read that again. Greg Rutkowski, absolute legend, well-respected artist that we all look up to. AI should exclude living artists from its database and instead focus on works under the public domain. That means basically stuff that's so old that it's kind of fallen out of copyright terms of usage Things like that, it's not living artists. This has, again, been one of my main issues from the beginning, and it really adds a layer of grime to this whole situation. He adds that there's a huge financial issue in involving AI from being nonprofit research to a commercial project without asking artists for permission to use their work. Again, he nails it. He hasn't even been involved in all this, and all of this is incredibly apparent to him immediately. So again, I'm going to read that again. He says, AI should have to ask or omit living artists if they don't get permission. Thank you, you fucking legend. 
So Technology Review cited the plight of Carolyn Henderson, who manages the art career of her husband, Steve Henderson, a popular commercial artist who paints landscapes and figurative scenes. She has fought to remove the presence of his work from Stable Diffusion's database. Good for her. Good for her. I'm going to look into that a little bit. I'm sure basically nothing happening, it goes on to say, but her requests have been neither acknowledged nor answered. Shocker. Rakowski has had a similar experience and has even entreated others to contact Lyon directly. Let's all do that, everybody. Let's send them an email and say, hey, guys, what you're doing is actually really inappropriate. But he still hasn't heard back. Since no one asked me to use my works in the first place, I haven't gotten any help any help other than my art friends. Goes on to say Artnet News is awaiting comment from Lyon as well. There's no comments on this. I usually like to dig around in the comments and see just the the debate. You got some people who are with us and it's like, this is grimy as hell. And some people are like, well, if you think it's going to put you out of a job, you are never a good artist to begin with. I only have one word to say to you guys, and that's maybe you should rethink that. So pretty much, I, I don't want to classify this as good news, but I do... It's a positive that big voices are starting to get upset and are starting to try to take action here. It's not just my stupid little YouTube channel where people, you know, a lot of people are just like, you're just like a Luddite, which is such a stupid word. It's just like, bah. Again, you know, I really just not really sure what to say to someone who calls me a Luddite, except like, you know, go buy a fucking sketchbook and some pencils, you prick. So anyway, that's pretty much what we got here. Um, the thing to take from this is feel free to contact Lyon Database, their German company, and uh, the whole thing with the, its nonprofit research and then, then going and turning over those into for-profit models, that's pretty grimy. This is a pretty good example of how technology has moved much faster than copyright laws. And again, if you wanted to maybe contact your senators or congressmen and say, hey, like, I've got an issue with this. This is, this is unscrupulous, blah, 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 however you want to frame it. They don't really care about artists, but if you tell them you're not going to vote for them and enough people say that this is a big enough problem, they may, 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 maybe, maybe might take notice. So good news, bad news here. If Greg Rakowski can't get an answer from them, then I'm not sure what answer we're going to get. But let's just spread the word, like share this video or just tell people, just talk about it. You don't have to share this video. I don't give a shit if this channel grows at all. I don't want to make money. I just want to speak my mind because this sucks this absolutely sucks and like shout out to greg rakowski for so many things for for his work that he's brought to us over the years it's just absolutely stunning i mean look at that look at this look at this i mean look ai isn't can't do this yet but it can definitely try to ape his style with brush strokes and everything so let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you with Greg or or do you think I'm just being a reactionary asshole again and everyone's just being too pretentious, a bunch of gatekeeping, it's my stuff, blah, 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 blah. So that's it. I'll talk to you guys later. Good luck in the wars to come, my friends. I'm out.